dysfunctional vet. I bought this tank and this valve right up here, which is a 7556V, I believe, has uh, gone bad. The shutoff valve is broken off and it needs to be replaced. That is accomplished by putting a one inch socket on it. Taking a handle, putting it down inside. Now I broke this free yesterday using a uh, three foot cheater. And now you turn this by hand. It's now turning freely by hand. And this is ready to come out. Now there's some hard Teflon or something right here. I'm going to break this off and use a little brass brush to clean all this off. You want to use something that will not produce a spark so that you don't get an explosion. I previously cleaned this off a moment ago. This is now clean. Before I take this out, I'm going to prep the other one and get it ready to go. So let me show you how I do that. When I threaded the Teflon onto the other one, I was actually out of the frame. And I can't show you how to do it on that other one because I've installed it before I realized I had missed it. So I'm filming this on the old one. The way I do this, this is my left hand. This is my left hand side right here. So my threads are pointing to the left. The way I remember it is you left me, me this way. So my Teflon needs to be threaded when it's pointed left, you left me. My Teflon needs to be threaded to the left like so, and that's all I'm going to do because I'm not going to put this one in. The thread comes around towards me when the pipe is pointed left. You left comes to me. You left me. That's how I remember which way to thread this. And unfortunately, like I said, I got the camera, <coughs> got the item out of frame. But that's how you put Teflon tape on there. You left, it's pointed left, me, so I come towards me. If it's the other way, then it would be the opposite. <coughs> but normally, I'm holding this in my right hand, so it's coming towards me. That's the way that I remember how to do that. And unfortunately, I didn't film that where you could see it, and that piece is already installed. The next thing I'm getting ready to do is I'm getting ready to change a gauge. I'm going to actually do what's called a rebuild on it. Let me show you that real quick. This is the old gauge right here. These gauges come in different sizes. This plate right here is what's holding this mechanism down inside the tank. To replace this piece right here, you remove these two screws, this plate lifts up, you put this one in, put the screws back down. Now it's important to note the orientation so that it's correct. My zero is down here towards the fill side. The way this mechanism works, it's really cool. See, my gauge shows that I have 30% uh, on it. What happens is it has a magnet I don't know if these are magnetic, but if it is, we'll make it change. There we go. It has a magnet, and that magnet, as it moves around, causes this gauge to change position according to the level inside, which is a mechanical level, floats up and down, and then it has a magnet that it spins around here, and it causes it to work. That way, this thing is a complete pressure tank. What I'm getting ready to do is I'm going to take this out I'm going to replace these screws because they're kind of funky. 
you, t you loosen one, loosen the other, loosen one, loosen the other. And you keep doing this until you can remove them by hand. This mechanism slides up very, very carefully. And then you replace the O-ring. They come in several sizes, so you have to have the right one. You remove this. You test the new piece, in this case, my gauge, which would be in place. It would be on here. That's what I'm getting ready to change out. You would test your gauge, and after you tested your gauge to make sure the mechanical part was working, then you'd carefully set it back in place and put your screws back inside. And then uh, you'd be ready to go. Now, I'm, I'm rebuilding this tank. I'm rebuilding all the stuff that needs to be rebuilt on it. The valve, let's see if can back off. This valve was just under 100 from the gas company. This top gauge was $8, and I bought a brand new large regulator, two stage, and I bought a new pigtail, is what I'm calling this. It may have an actual name, but I'm just calling it a pigtail. I bought a new pigtail for it, and this was under. I think it was about 88 bucks for the regulator and the pigtail. So right now I'm looking at almost exactly 200 bucks for the valve right here. Now let me tilt this for this valve for my new regulator, my pigtail, and my new gauge. And I got the gasket for free, and they gave me the bolts for free. So I'm going to loosen these up, take it out, and then we'll come back and I'll film what I'm doing. You're supposed to use a silicon sealant to reseal this thing. You lift this piece out, and voila, there it is. Now, we have to get the other one. And before we put this thing in, we're going to have to clean this out. And it appears to me that we have the wrong dial. Let's see if I can push it out. I need to clean all this out before I remove this. And I need to see if I can put this one in. That one is the right size, but I need some kind of flange to hold this in place. Let's see what happens when I rotate it. It appears more or less that this is working. Now if you notice, this is solid metal down here. I just need to clean all this out and then figure out what I'm going to do with this seeing how this piece doesn't work with this particular fitting. Having now removed the screws from the top up here, we're going to remove this. We're going to put our gauge on. We're going to test to see if it's working or if this piece needs to be replaced. Then we'll re be replacing a, a gasket that's on the inside, and we will be reassembling it. What I'm doing is I'm articulating this arm and the system is working. If you look, if you look right here, there's a little gear system which turns the magnet at the top that causes it to work properly. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put this back in and we're going to put a gasket on this 
and then we're going to seat it into place. If we have the right size gasket, we're going to do that. We don't have the right size gasket, so we are going to have to get this gasket out. I do not want to damage this. Alright, the gasket is now off and out, and it's also broken, which is not good. We will now use our knife, and we will very carefully remove the debris off of the top of this. We do not want to create a spark, or static electricity, or anything like that. Get a paper towel. We'll clean this out. We'll clean this off. We will measure this diameter. Sunlight's half blinded me. It is one and nine sixteenths in diameter. One and nine sixteenths diameter. So we want to write that down. somewhere where I can see it. One and nine sixteenths in diameter. That's this ring right here. We now need to close this up to protect it. And we're going to put some screws in this to help hold it in place and help keep everything clean. And when it comes time to open it up again, we'll be ready to go. It is very important when you're putting this back together to get it in the right range. This shows empty and we're going to verify that we have it right and we do. I remember this because the square was on the bottom and the triangle was at the top. So we now put this back in. I'm now going to put the screws in and I'll cover this with something to keep it dry and then I'll close the top down on top of it. That concludes this portion of it. With the new gasket, the screws tied down and remember you screw one side slightly, this one slightly, then this one, then this one, and you repeat the pattern. You don't want to tighten one down all the way. You want it to evenly seize down, but with all the new pieces in place, the only thing left to do now is to hook up my pigtail here, this is my pigtail right there, to the regulator that's in this box. And we are finished, and this is ready to be filled with propane. I hope this helps. I hope this was a good introduction to propane tank repairs. In many states you can't do this. Texas. It's still legal to do this, otherwise I'd have to pay somebody to come out here and do everything I just did for myself. Now, the instructions on this, I haven't put the glue down yet, 
the instructions say that this glues down with a specific type of silicone and in the instructions it tells you what silicon to use to glue this down and we've tested it we know it works life is good we're ready to have this filled with propane and get on with the winter with that said dysfunctional vet out